Zumi's prayers a necessarily infinite distance. Spring came to the land and it was very welcome. All these newnesses, portenders of the mysterious gift to come. The language, sight, and operants of another world cannot say themselves to us. We say they are other, holy, set apart. What we do know from there is the goodness of the Lord. What great gift to us to see, not spring, but everness in a man, perfectly virtuous, righteous before the God of all the universe, and whose purpose was that in himself we be instructed in the knowledge of God. Thus you shall have come to us absent our sin, absent our need of Savior, for you have many names aside from priest and sacrifice, wonderful counselor, prince of peace. In the higher world, peace reigns. It will be disoriented or disorienting, for we have had little of it. We were born broken, thus to love each other away from envy, but as we would a rag doll or an injured puppy. How much the more we shall love you when tis known the suffering love outpoured to us. We cannot be disgruntled of our origins when is seen the Lord of Lords dissemble himself to humanity and to allow in ourself into forsakenness and the deeper hell. We will never directly or perfectly comprehend you, thou of infinite love, goodness, and powers. But a perfection of image is given us in the Son of God, not as a still life portrait, but one with whom we were friends, ate the same food, breathed the same air, thought great thoughts. The inaccessible being became brother to us, and we shall have access to your infinitudes. What here is too wonderful for us to know will be a growing fullness in our ever and ever life. The rational conceptions of our mind will be swallowed up when confronted to that which is absolutely immense, eternal, infinite. That which you are in your essence, not only have not the prophets seen, but neither the angels nor the archangels. Perhaps with us, embodied and living our friendship with you, the angels will see a higher form of life than they have yet known. If we now ask them of the substance of God, we can only hear them say, holy, 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 glory to God in the highest. The cherubim and seraphim say, the whole earth is full of his glory. We are at a necessarily infinite distance from you. Yet of all things you are able, and able to come closely among men in your goodness and love. When Moses asked of you, I beseech thee, show me thy glory, he did not know what he was asking. For to see the uncreated essence of your essence and being is not possible. You declare to him that he cannot see your face and live. None can have either bodily sight or direct mental intuition of the divine being. But this I will do, said the Lord. I will make my glory pass before you, and you shall see my back parts. Man is mean and unworthy of discovering you, weak and could not bear it, guilty and could not but dread it. We are able to bear up under only the merciful display which is made in Jesus Christ alone. Perhaps the cave in the rock represents Christ the rock, the rock of refuge, salvation, and strength. The cleft, an emblem of Christ, as smitten, crucified, wounded, and slain. Our seeing of you is but like seeing a man that has gone by, whose back only is to be seen. Reserved to another state of being, even there, incomplete, is the full and bright display of your glory, grace, and goodness. And when we ask, show us the Father, you say, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. No man can see, neither in this life nor in the next, your glorious presence. It was to be a thousand years later that the Son of Man was to show his person among men. 
even we now have not seen you, but is said to us, Blessed are you that have not seen and yet have believed. Amen.